Dear sir, my solar charge controller has a problem. The electricity is flowing. My batteries are lead acid. My system is a 12 volt system. System is running at 13.2, supposed to be full charge. That's about right, I guess. 150 watts of panels and an 80 amp battery. And he included a video of his um, remote control box for his uh, charge controller. And on that video, I'll have, I'll have Shelly put up a pic picture of this in the, uh, in the video. You can see it. I got a picture that I've grabbed a still, and right now it shows that it's got a little picture of his array. And if you follow the arrow from the array, it goes to the battery and then out to the light bulb. So you got one that represents your solar array, one that represents your battery bank, and one that represents the outgoing power, which is the light bulb. That's how I'm guessing this is supposed to be. Uh, right now he's at 13.9 volts with a 12 volt system. Okay, so now we're getting into another interesting area that made me panic when we first started. First, I want to point out that in his video, in this picture, it's showing that his array is all lit up under full power. It's showing that his battery bank is full because all the lines are all the way up to the top. And the light bulb that it's showing that's supposed to represent his load is off. So, what I'm getting from that is, he's probably got really good sunshine going on because the panels are happy. The batteries are full and he's not using any of the power. He's got a 12 volt system. So, he should have right around 14 volts of power in a 12 volt system. And if that sounds strange to you, because it did me, I didn't want to burn up my batteries. You know, the batteries are like one of the most expensive parts of this whole deal. So you want to take care of your batteries. There was a time in our first year where our 24 volt system was running most of the day once it was charged up at over 29 volts. And I was really worried that I was going to cook those batteries and I was looking for whatever it was that was causing it to be overcharging. And at the same time, you'll see those numbers like the, like with his, the 13.9 uh, volts. You'll see it go from 13.1 all the way to 13.9. Then it'll be 13.2, it'll be 13.3. There's a reason for that. Although it looks bad and it makes you want to panic, you have three stages of charging, and those are regulated by your charge controller for the most part. The first one where you're charging the most at once is called bulk. So in his system, if he was going to, he wouldn't want to run his batteries down below 12 volts or 12.1 volts anyway, because that's where you're going to start to damage your batteries. So say 12 volts, we'll call it 12. When you get down to 12 volts, you see it start to charge, it goes into bulk. When the sun is up and it's really cranking, so it'll be going up, you know, 12, 5, 13, 13, 2, you'll see it constantly going up. Then it's going to slow down when it hits the next phase of charge, which is called absorb. So your charge controller is going to slow the rate of charge, and because it does, you're not looking at all that extra voltage from the panels. So what I'm saying is the only time that that meter is going to be 100% accurate as to what your actual charge is in your battery bank is when, number one, there's no power being taken out and when there's no power going in. Either one will drastically affect your meter and what it's doing. So that's the first reason. That and once your batteries are topped off and they get up to the desired rate of charge where the voltage is supposed to be, they go into the third mode, which is called float. And just like it sounds, that's what the voltage does. So 
if you run your microwave and you use a, a little bit of power, you'll, you'll see that voltage drop back off. Then you'll see it in float mode come back up because it, you're, you're filling back up what you've taken. So when I told you it was like a bank, you're maintaining a, a, a constant um, balance and it should be above 12 volts in his case and it should be below 14 or around 14 maximum. And that's if you're seeing all the other things that are affecting that at once. Once the sun goes down and there's no more power being put into those batteries from your panels, you'll see that those spikes start to come more flat. And as you use power, it'll only go down. But you won't see the big dramatic up spikes and down spikes because you're not in float anymore because you're not charging. Okay? That may sound complicated, but it's the bank account thing. When you're in float mode, you're maintaining that bank account. You took five bucks out, so at the end of the week, you put five bucks in to take its place, right? That's float. And that's why you see it constantly up and down on a wave, if that makes any sense to you. I thought the same thing. I thought we were going to burn our batteries up. I ended up calling our solar guy and asking him about it because even though I'm around electricians, at the time I wasn't around any electricians that knew a lot about DC power or solar. And there's a difference. <laughs> there really is. Uh, Charlie, our solar guy, was the one that explained to me that it was just like a car. And he said, okay, so if your car is 12 volts, does that mean your battery's 12 volts? No, it does not. If your battery gets down to 12 volts, it's not going to start your car very good because there's not much power left in it. Really, your battery most of the time is around 14 volts. Well, the fellow that sent us the question wondering if he was in a trouble because he's making 13.9, he's not in trouble. Actually, his system is working exactly how it's supposed to. It's working exactly perfect. In my case, I was getting 29 or 30 volts because I'm running a 24-volt system. So the whole thing just doubles. Okay, this next question is also kind of complicated. This uh, person asks, why do people choose to wire their panels in par parallel as opposed to being in series? Good question. Good question. Um, generally, solar panels are measured in watts. Like when you're when you're looking at panels, they'll tell you how many watts a particular panel is. The difference in how you wire them, it depends on your system whether you're looking to get more power or more current. Current is measured in amps. Power is measured in volts, okay? Now, the same could be said for your battery bank too. This is why some people run 12 volts, some people run 24 volts, some people run 48 volt, and they may all have the same number of batteries and the same type of batteries. The only thing that's any different is how those batteries are connected to each other. Whether they're fully in parallel, fully in series, or whether you have separate parts that are in series, and then those parts are in parallel. You can weigh one need against the other, whether your amps are more of a problem for you than your volts are, okay? Um, basically, your solar panels work exactly like your batteries as far as how you wire them. Think of a good context to put this in. You ever see the big trucks, like uh, dump trucks or oil trucks, and they'll have uh, three or four batteries on the sides of them. Now that truck may have a 24 volt system and it may have a 12 volt system. It's hard to say which one. Battery's gonna be the same. When you, when you wire batteries in series, like if you take two 12 volt batteries 
and you wire them in series. So it's positive to negative, positive to negative. You're going to get 24 volts, okay? But your amps are going to stay the same as one single battery. So you gain nothing in your amps. You just gain in your volts, all right? Now, if you wire them in parallel, positive to positive, negative to negative, you're going to keep the same amount of volts, but the amount of available amps is going to double. All right? If that makes any sense to you at all. This is why a lot of people go with 6-volt batteries. Because when you add your 6-volt batteries together, you can separate out, like ours, ours is 24 batteries. I think there are four sets of six. So we have six batteries that are hooked together to provide the 24 volts. There are another six batteries over here that are hooked together to provide 24 volts. There are another six over here. They each, each of those sets of six provide 24 volts. Then... They're all hooked together like one big battery off from the corners to give you more amps. So that way you keep your voltage down to where you want it, but you get more amps out of it so you're able to do more stuff with it. Because the volts, what most people don't understand is we have a 24 volt system. We don't run our system down to 24 volts very often without starting to turn some stuff off or starting a generator to charge the battery bank. Our batteries at peak charge in the dark with no load and no input are going to be over 25, around 26 volts. Now, it doesn't take a whole lot of math to figure out that our whole existence is revolving on two or three volts of power. It's all about the amp hours and what you do with them, not so much as it is the volts. The volts are good to keep track of the state of your battery bank. But when you start looking at what your actual power is, how much you're actually using, you need to start looking at the amps. That's what's really important. And um, if you want to calculate the watts, that's pretty easy. All you got to do is multiply the volts times the amps. And that gives you your watts. Your solar companies will tell you all about this stuff, but they kind of, they do it in such a way that it has a, has a habit of just kind of blowing right by some people without it sinking in. And it's going to, to be really honest with you, even though I read up on all this stuff as much as I could before I started, this should all be as simple as we can make it. We should all be trying to work ourselves towards all levels of independence whether it's power independence or any kind of independence, it's always a good thing. This has been our first in a little series, I hope, of uh, questions that I get about solar power. Hopefully I've answered some of them for you uh, without getting too technical. I don't mean to talk over anybody's head. I don't think I've misspoke too many times, but it's hard because, again, I'm not a teacher, not an electrician, I'm not an engineer. I'm just some old fat hillbilly that lives in the woods with solar power. But I'm pretty happy doing it. I'd like to see all of you the same way. With that being said, I guess we'll call it a day. And if you guys have any questions, put them down there in the comments. And hopefully we all learn something together. So this is Scott from Whiskey and Sunshine Off-Grid. Have a nice day.